What's up you beautiful, charmful and healthy individuals? It's Uncle Nightshift and I'm bringing you a cool story about... Wait, what? <laughs> I mean, I was going to say that tonight we're gonna focus on all the battle damage this tiger sustained over its long lifespan. Or, in other words, we'll paint the shell impacts and the damage Zimmerit. And we'll also take care of those surface details and tools like fire extinguisher and gun cleaning rods. Alrighty my mates, so before we begin I'd like to throw in this picture many of you are already familiar with, but this time for a slightly different reason. Take a look at the flaking Timurit and keep it in mind, because there are a few points that I'm gonna talk about just in a one small moment. <laughs> but before we start chipping the Timurit, let's take care of the weld beads, because as we know, these get chipped as well. As usual, Tamiya X11 for the rescue, because even though it's a regular bad silver paint, it works well for this purpose. Wild beads don't corrode, so when the paint rubs off of them, they should be nice and shiny. I focus this effect mainly on horizontal surfaces where crew walks around and as such, this kind of effect would naturally appear here. But because the effect is too shiny, I decided to tone it down with a wash. This knocks down the shiny paint, but it also brings out the weld bead texture. There are a few places where I accidentally apply too much paint and it float into the weld texture, where it naturally shouldn't be, so the wash will fix that quickly and easily. Now that the weld beads are taken care of, we can take a look at the Zimmerit. The anti-magnetic paste was a neutral grey slash tan color, so I mixed something something in between. I started by painting the biggest areas where the pattern was damaged and this includes some of the mistakes I made while creating it from two-part epoxy putty. One thing I'd like to point out, uh, it's not easy to work on this surface because of all the ridges and rough texture. It's definitely something I didn't see coming, but well, what can I do? Anyway. After blocking out the damaged parts, I switched to a smaller paintbrush and added more delicate chips. Now I'd like to get back to those black and white pictures I showed you at the beginning of this video. So, if you search for some pictures of tanks with damaged Zimmerit, you'll quickly note how it leaves a visible residue where it flakes off. That's because the paste got absorbed by the matte oxide red primer which all tanks were originally painted with, but, as I already explained in the previous videos, this tiger is an old version which was originally painted in Panzer Grey and later repaired and coated with Zimmerit, which I believe didn't hold very well on the smooth grey paint. Grey paint, not great. <laughs> this explains the heavy flaking on the real tank and might also explain why the Zimmerit left no residue whatsoever. Turns out this is a good thing, because when I tried it on a test piece, it looked really, really bad. So anyway, after finishing with the acrylic paints, I switched to oils, and I used pure white diluted with enamel thinner to create more fine chips, using the speckling method. If this was a flat piece, I'd prefer painting them with a brush and acrylics, but because it's too jagged, I found it easier this way. And of course I removed all of the unwanted specks with enamel thinner. <laughs> enamel thinner. The effect was finally toned down with a very light wash of dark brown. This is the same paint I used during the oil rendering stage and I applied it very sparingly, just to slightly bring out the texture and make the exposed Zimmerit color look more... more weathered and dirty. So this is the result. I mean, I was looking forward to this step, but turns out I was kinda disappointed. It just wasn't as fun as I expected. Maybe because of the dark grey paint, or... I don't know. Maybe it'll be more fun next time on another German tank. Anyway, let's now move on and paint the shell impacts. This is one of the most requested techniques, so I hope you won't be disappointed. First step, black-brown oil paint. 
This one simulates the heat exposure from the impact and it's all just about painting the outline of the crater and then carefully blending it outward. Some modelers use airbrush for this, but I'm not very good at airbrushing, so this method provides me with more control over the effect. Second step, dark rusty acrylic paint. This is just to distinguish the inside of the impacts. The reason why I'm using acrylic paint is because it won't react with the oil paints. Again, this can be done with an airbrush, but I wouldn't be able to pull it off, because I'm bad at airbrushing. <laughs> Next step, enamel rust washes. Important note, I left the model for a few hours before starting with this step, just to give the oil paint some time to dry. On the other hand, I'm applying the enamel washes in small amounts and blending them while they are still wet. Wet blending is much less aggressive than if you'd let the paint become dry to the touch and then reactivate it. So, technically, this step could be done even without giving the oil several hours to set. But then again, better to be safe than sorry. Next, light chipping. The color choice depends on the color of the tank obviously. Since the surrounding area is panzer grey, I mixed a light grey to paint the small flaking created by the force of the impact. This step is a lot of fun and it also adds tons of visual detail. The same goes for the dark steel chipping. A few small chips exposing the steel surface where the panzer grey paint was scratched by the shrapnel and spalling. And finally, a light rust wash applied on top of the steel chips. I purposely chose the light tone to distinguish the effect from the regular chipping which is all over the tank. It's gonna look fresh and as if it was caused by flying bits of hot metal. Or that's what I'd like to believe. <laughs> of course, the final touch is to polish the sharp edges of each crater with a pencil to give them a metallic sheen. But I'll make that once the model is weathered with dust and mud effects, because enamel thinner would dissolve the graphite from the pencil. Anyway, this whole thing about shell impacts is something new on this channel, even though I painted these effects multiple times before. So let me know in the comments if it looks interesting and what do you think about the result. In the meantime, let's finish the details. Just like someone commented in one of the Hucha videos, most of them will be painted grey. Such as the periscopes, machine guns, the rubber antenna mount, and the leather padding inside the hatch. I think it's leather. The grey color was mixed from black and white Vallejo paints, with no specific ratio in mind, just a dark grey color, nothing special about it. For these next details I added more white to the mix and this was applied over the crowbar, the ends of the gun cleaning rods, even though these should be made from brass, but I don't have a brass color so let's pretend they were made from steel until I buy one, and the fire extinguisher. This one was just painted in grey color in real life so it doesn't simulate any metal surface, but we'll get back to it in a moment. So, to have some more fun, I blended both enamel rust washes over those metal components. And it, let's just take a moment to appreciate how good this combination looks. I mean, just light grey base color and two tones of rust on top of that. Super easy, super fast and the results look really good in my opinion. <laughs> okay, now that I've blown my own whistle, let's get back to the extinguisher. After masking it with a tape, I gave it a coat of Tamiya semi-gloss varnish. Those markings which I mentioned in the construction video arrived a few weeks ago, so yay, but they are too big. They just don't fit a regular 135th scale German fire extinguisher. I was warned about this by a friend of mine who recommends buying an alternative from Archer Fine Transfers, but since I already bought these, I decided to make them work. So I've cut the lower part off. And I think it looks great even if it's not accurate. Alright, so now I gave it a coat of chipping fluid, followed up by the olive green which I used to paint the tank. My idea is that the fire extinguisher was replaced at some point for a new one, 
and then it was repainted with the tank, with green color. The chipping fluid allowed me to remove the paint with tap water to show the decal and some of the grey original color as well. As a result, the extinguisher will have a unique texture and it will be a nice little detail for the more observant viewers. Even though I never leave my house so nobody will ever see it. But anyway. <laughs> the final step was to give it a quick wash for German yellow from ammo to bring out the straps and other fine details and the result is... Totally worth it. Like, totally worth the effort. <laughs> Alright, the final details were the wooden parts of the gun cleaning rods. These were painted with a combination of old wood from Panzer Aces and Vallejo Iraqi sand. Then I created the wood grain texture with the same paints heavily diluted with water. I used Iraqi sand on those painted in old wood and old wood on those... I mean, the one, because there's only one, painted in Iraqi sand. It's the same method I demonstrated in one of the previous videos on wooden tool handles. And this is the result after some quick oil paint treatment. And also check it out, this time I painted the convoy light the way it should be, if I remember correctly. Again, dark grey base and Tamiya clear blue on top. I think people said it was blue. And that's it for tonight, my friends. As you can see, I didn't paint the spare tracks on the turret. Um, that's because I'm keeping them for the next video, which is gonna be all about painting spare tracks. Both those which are glued to the turret and also those on the hull, which I'm keeping separate. And then there are, of course, exhausts as well which I want to make into another video, so I suppose there will be a lot of rust and metal in the upcoming two weeks or so. But after that, we'll start weathering this model with dust and mud, and hopefully all of the effects we've done so far will be tied together into an interesting finish. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give it a like and leave a comment, because it helps me a lot. And I'd like to say thank you to my amazing patrons who make this weekly show possible. If you'd like to support this channel and get some extra content in return, such as almost daily blog style photo updates from my workbench, one week early ad free videos, or maybe you'd just like to chat about anything you'd like, in that case, don't hesitate to take a look at the different rewards I'm offering, starting at $1 a month. And of course a big thank you for watching this video all the way to the end, because that also helps me a lot. So until I see you again, let me just wish you an amazing weekend, good health and lots of finished models. Stay safe and I'll see you again the next week. And a few bloopers. What's up you beautiful, charmful and healthy individuals, it's Uncle Nightshift and I'm bringing you a cool story about... Wait... Does he have something? The anti-magnetic paste was a neutral grey... <laughs> this one simulates the heat exposure from the impact and it's all about just... 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 <laughs> and then it was repainted with the tank. So, with green color. Zayats. Servus.